Hello, welcome to our daily Bible reading. We are, if you're counting, up to day 345. We're nearly there. And we're reading two significant epistles today because both of them are essentially the last epistles that the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter wrote, um, albeit the, the first of the last. So we're looking at 1 Timothy, written what looks like to Timothy, but in effect, it's actually written to the Ephesian church. So Paul is writing to Timothy because Timothy, his protege, his son, is kind of being mistreated. And Paul is writing in a way that's really to the Ephesians to tell them, stop, stop mistreating my boy. So let's pray. We're going to get into it. And then we'll also be looking at 1 Peter. Father, we again thank you for your word. We pray that your word will speak to our hearts. We pray, oh God, that we will glean here from your word, that it might speak to us in a way that helps us to follow Christ more closely. In Jesus' name, amen. This is 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the command of God, our Saviour, and of Christ Jesus, our hope. To Timothy, my true child in the faith, Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus, so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies, which promote speculations rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Certain persons, by swerving from these, have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they are saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. Now, we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully, understanding this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine, in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with which I have been entrusted. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me, the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the King of immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. This charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith, among whom are Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. And that last statement sounds pretty strong, but in, in essence, Rather than praying for God to protect them and bless them and look after them, it seems that Paul said, God, you deal with them. I'm handing them over. Lord, have your way. And so that expression there, I've handed them over to Satan. In other words, they've gone their own way. They're going to go their own way. And God, I know you're going to use this, hopefully, to bring them back. Chapter 2. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good 
and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Saviour, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself as a ransom for all, which is the testimony given at the proper time. For this I was appointed a preacher and an apostle. I'm telling the truth, I'm not lying, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth, I desire then that in every place the men should pray, lifting holy hands without anger or quarrelling. Likewise also that women should adorn themselves in respectful apparel, with modesty and self-control, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly attire, but with what is proper for women who profess godliness, with good works. Let a woman learn quietly with all submissiveness, I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. For Adam was formed first, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. Yet she will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith and love and holiness with self-control. So you can see here Paul is, just, even at this late stage in his life, and it won't be long now before he meets his end. But he's still passionate about the gospel. He's still passionate about people coming to know Christ. He describes himself as the chief sinner and gives him an opportunity really to share his testimony in a very brief format. But it's still, he shares his story. I was a sinner and Christ saved me. I didn't deserve it, but I thank God for it. Christ has come into my life. Amazing. Let's now read First Peter chapter 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who are elect exiles of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in the sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honour at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Concerning this salvation, the prophets who prophesied about the grace that was to be yours, searched and inquired carefully, inquiring what person or time the Spirit of Christ in them was indicating when he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the subsequent glories. It was revealed to them that they were serving not themselves, but you in the things that have now been announced to you through those who preached the good news to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. Therefore, preparing your minds for action and being sober-minded, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the passions of your former ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on him as father who judges impartially according to each one's deeds, Conduct yourselves with fear throughout the time of your exile, knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Like that of a lamb without blemish or spot, he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but was made manifest in the last times for the sake of you, who through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead, and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God, having purified your souls by your obedience to the truth for a sincere brotherly love. Love one another earnestly from a pure heart, 
since you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and abiding word of God. For all flesh is like grass and all its glory like the flower of grass. The grass withers and the flower falls, but the word of the Lord remains forever. And this word is the good news that was preached to you. And again, this is Peter's last, well, it's the, it's the first of his last two epistles. And it would not be that long after writing this that he also would, would meet his end. And at the, same, uh, at, the, at the same instigator, that would be Caesar Nero, who would take Peter's life and have him crucified in 64 AD. And so it's remarkable that even with that foreknowledge of what was about to happen, because Christ had indicated it to him in the Gospel of John, he's still passionate about people coming to know Christ. And may we be as well. I'm going to pray now. But if you haven't given this a thumbs up, please do. I'd really appreciate it. It helps me to know that you're tracking with me. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please subscribe. And I'm going to pray now and ask that God blesses you and helps you to become someone who's also passionate about Christ and his salvation that he offers those in our world. Father, we do thank you that we can see here these two veterans of the faith, these men who've walked with you, who had walked for you at the time of the writing for decade upon decade, and they were still passionate about knowing Christ and still passionate that others might come to know Christ. And I pray, Lord, that we too might share in that passion, that we might long to see our friends, our family, our neighbours, our work colleagues come to know Christ. And I pray that they will. And I pray that you'll use everyone who's joining with me now in this daily Bible reading. Use them, Father, as instruments to cause others to come to faith in Christ. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. And I'll see you tomorrow for our next daily Bible reading.